G'day, welcome to this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel. My name is Chris Muir, I'm a product manager working for Oracle Corporation. In today's episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel, we're going to move on from the previous episode where we talked about from your ADF application, we talked about building your ADF application. Now what we're going to talk about in this specific episode is talking about deploying your application. That is deploying your application to a WebLogic server. Now we're not going to necessarily look at how to do that, but rather we're going to look at the different options that are available to you and some of the pros and cons of those options. And this may make you decide which option to actually pick for your actual dev test and production deployments. So before we actually start talking about all these different options, here's a very important question that we need to answer. So if we're talking about deployment, Surely this is a discussion about OJ Deploy. Can't OJ Deploy deploy our software to our servers? Well, the thing about OJ Deploy is it's in fact named that from a historical perspective. What it does is from J Developer, it deploys or generates the jars, the ADF library jars, the ears and the walls to the file system. So in essence, it is doing a deployment of such. It's creating the artifacts that you would then go and deploy. But OJ Deploy itself doesn't actually then take those artifacts and deploy them onto a WebLogic server. So in a way, OJ Deploy now is a bit of a badly known product, but its name is kept for historical and backwards compatibility reasons. Um, we can't go and change it because it's used by all sorts of customers out there. Okay, so OJ Deploy is not what we're talking about in this episode. It really was covered in the previous episode when we talked about building our applications. So let's put that aside and then consider deploying our applications. Before we deploy our applications to a WebLogic server, what are some of the prerequisites that we need to meet? So before actually deploying our applications to a WebLogic server, we actually need to have the deployment artifacts. That is a jar, an ear, a wall, an ADF library jar. Now, as we described in a previous episode, in order to generate those artifacts, you would typically use a tool like OJ Deploy, which would create the artifacts on the file system, and then they are ready to be put up on the WebLogic server. Now, when putting those artifacts up on the WebLogic server, particularly ADF artifacts, the fact is they cannot run without the associated ADF runtime libraries being installed on the WebLogic server beforehand. Now, specific to the version that you actually built your ADF application in, say JDeveloper 11.1.1.7.0, you will need to then install the associated ADF runtime libraries 11.1.1.7.0. Now, thanks to the history of JDeveloper, sometimes we provide you the exact ADF runtime libraries for that version. And sometimes what you're doing is you're installing the previous version of the ADF runtime libraries and patching it. So because of this, it does get a little bit complex, but the Oracle documentation, my Oracle support, and the notes on my Oracle support do provide additional information here. As an alternative, Oracle ace Tim O'Hahn has an excellent blog which gives in additional instructions on this. I really highly recommend that you check out Timo's blog. It always has excellent material regarding ADF on it. Of course, one last thing you need to do before your ADF application will run is, well, any other dependent layers such as say the database or LDAP servers or operating system patches that need to be installed, well, they need to have been installed for the ADF application to run. So if the latest version of your ADF application requires changes to the database, you need to already run those scripts in. I guess this kind of goes without saying, but people, you know, there's a bigger picture here than just ADF, of course. So in terms of the options you have available to you in order to actually deploy to, say, a WebLogic server, the options actually divide into two categories, the manual set of options and the automatic set of options that you potentially would script and call from, say, a continuous integration server. In terms of the manual options, there is the JDeveloper IDE, using the WebLogic server console itself, or something called the Fusion, uh, the Fusion Middleware Control Console, which is part of Oracle Enterprise Manager and the Fusion Middleware Infrastructure Layer. In terms of automatic methods that can be scripted, you have the weblogic.deployer method, the WLST, uh, WLST scripts, and also in the 12C release, we now have the Maven deployment plugins. So let's talk about those in a little bit more detail and what the pros and cons of each of those are. 
So the first manual option you can use to deploy your applications is the JDeveloper IDE itself. Developers would be quite familiar that you can set up a connection to a WebLogic server and then essentially deploy the application through that connection. In doing this, the JDeveloper IDE does build the code beforehand. It then generates the associated artifacts, the ears, the walls, the jars, and then that's what it deploys to the actual WebLogic server. It's worthwhile noting when deploying the application through the deployment profile, you can apply a deployment plan to the actual application before it hits the server. Now you remember from the previous episode that deployment plans are a WebLogic server concept that allows it to modify some of the standard files such as the WebXML file in your application artifact before it's actually deployed onto the server. Now the JDeveloper IDE, while very handy for developers, and for deploying to development servers is not really something that you want to allow to be used for deploying to test and production servers. Why? Because developers can muck it up. They might decide to deploy to a development server but then accidentally deploy to a production server. In terms of the options for deploying to servers as well, one of the other things that is not so particularly great about the JDeveloper IDE is that, well, you can't modify any of the ADF M beams, that's the managed beams running on the WebLogic server after deployment. So for instance, you can't change the ADF BC connection credentials after deployment. So this again doesn't make it very ideal for test and production deployments. The next manual option is the WebLogic server console itself. The WS console provides you the option to take an ear, a jar, a wall and upload it to the server. Now with that in mind, that means it doesn't obviously work from the source code, it only works from the end artifacts. Of course, because this is the WebLogic server console itself, it will allow you to apply deployment plans to the actual artifacts as they're deployed. And as bonus, unlike the JDeveloper IDE, you also get support for a number of other WebLogic server features, such as production redeployments. Unfortunately, some of the negatives of the WebLogic server console is that because it's a generic Java EE server, a Java Enterprise Edition server, it really has no intelligence about ADF or Fusion middleware applications. So in this regard, it has no ability to inspect the ADF M beams and allow you to change the ADF settings of the application at runtime. The last manual deployment option we'll consider is the Fusion Middleware Control Center. Now the Fusion Middleware Control is a web-based console that gets installed into your WebLogic server and it is an extension of the Oracle Enterprise Manager pack for Fusion Middleware. Just like the WLS console, it will allow you to actually deploy manually ears, jars and walls to the WebLogic server. It does not work from the source code, it requires the artifacts. In addition, like the WebLogic Server Console, it's intelligent enough to work with deployment plans, but of more significance, it has intelligence built in to administer the ADF M beans or Fusion Middleware applications, so you can change settings at runtime, such as the ADF Business Component parameters or the connection parameters of your ADF application. However, flip side, the Fusion Middleware Control doesn't or isn't aware of some of the other WebLogic Server options, such as production redeployment. So it's not ideal in all circumstances. Let's now consider our first option, which can be called automatically, and that is the weblogic.deployer option. This class is one that's installed with weblogic server, and you can call it from the command line using Java. However, this can also be called from Apache Ant, which makes it a very good option for calling from, say, a continuous integration server in order to deploy your applications automatically. Just like some of the previous options, it deploys our ears, our walls, our jars to the WebLogic server. It does not work from the source code, so you will need to have built your application before actually calling weblogic.deployer. Also, because it is a WebLogic utility, it does understand deployment plans and it also supports WebLogic Server production redeployment. Unfortunately, like the WebLogic Server console, it in addition has no intelligence built in to administrate ADF or Fusion Middleware applications through the associated M beans. 
so this doesn't make it ideal in all situations for modifying our ADF applications after they've been deployed to the server. Another tool provided by WebLogic Server is WebLogic Server Scripting Language or WST. Now WST is actually a command line interface, well in kind of some ways it's an interpreter that you can log into and execute a number of commands. But in addition, it can be called from Apache Air, making it scriptable. Now, WST is way more than just a deployment option, unlike weblogic.deployer, so it gives you a lot more, much more flexibility. It can be called manually, so from the command line, like we talked about, or you can automate it by calling it from tools like your continuous integration servers. Again, it has no ability to work with the source code. It must have ears, walls, and jars to actually deploy to the server before it's called. As it's a very feature-rich set of solutions from WebLogic Server, it does support deployment plans and WebLogic Server production redeployments. In addition, a very important feature that makes WST nearly the ultimate solution for all our deployment needs is that it can modify the J Java EE managed beans or mBeans at runtime. So in context of our ADF and Fusion Metaware mBeans, we can actually modify those at runtime via WST. And the last option here, and it's one that's only really become available in JDeveloper 12C, is that there is now a Maven plugin for deploying to WebLogic Server. So essentially within your POM XML, there is a number of goals for deploying to the WebLogic server and a plugin is called to make the deployment to the actual WebLogic server, taking out all the work that is required. So in some ways where previously you would have relied on a continuous integration server to call some Apache Ant scripts to do this on your behalf, now you can use Maven to do the same thing. So finally, to sum up all the different options that we've considered, this matrix here basically gives you in one, one screen, one page, all the information that we've just conveyed in this episode. So hopefully this will be useful to you in order to quickly pick the best option for your circumstances. For anyone wanting to pursue any more information on any of these features discussed today or the different options, this slide here will give you a number of links to make your way to the appropriate documentation. So the last key point I want to make to you in this episode is to, in order to have a stress-free job as an administrator or somebody who's responsible for deploying applications to a WebLogic server, in order to avoid human mistakes, particularly when you're doing manual deployments, the key thing that you should be considering in terms of your deployments is automate, automate, automate. Set up your deployment scripts, use a number of the automatic tools that we've talked about here to ensure that your deployments go smoothly and there's less chances of you making a mistake on Sunday night when you've been working all week to meet some deadlines. Remember, make your job easier. You can have stress or you can have an easy life, your choice. So thanks again for joining us on this ADF Architecture TV channel today. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Only a couple more episodes of the TV channel to go. Next, we'll be looking at server topologies. I hope you'll join us for those episodes very soon.